Hello, hello. Welcome back. It's Anna. All right. I'm going to do just a quick little video um, because I haven't really had time to sit down to do a stationary minimalism update for you. So I thought I would do it just kind of in segments. Um, I did get a lot of questions to see what it, um, what the progress is in my stationary minimalism. Um, and one of the main questions was how many notebooks I have left. Um, cause I did make that one of the main topics is to use up notebooks that I have. And I'm going to speak in a quiet voice because my daughter is sleeping right now. It is nighttime. The house is quiet and I thought I'd grab a moment to show you. So. In my craft room, because I'm very lucky to have my own little space in this house, I have a bookshelf in my room, and on the bottom shelf is all of my blank notebooks that I'm showing you right now. Some of them are just cases too, but for the most part, these are just all the notebooks that I have still yet to use. Um, some of them are sketchbooks, some of them are, you know, just kind of planner stuff, so not all of it is, um, you know, stuff that I actually have to use up, but it all sits on this bottom shelf here. It looks like a lot, and I know it does. Um, but, you know, progress compared to what it was like a year ago and a year before that when I started. Um, when did I start this? Oh my god, it was like 2016 actually. 2016? 2017 2018 I can't remember anymore how long have I been doing this guys um but it goes to show that I'm trying to make progress and I'm really making an effort to try to use them the only thing not included here is my traveler's notebook inserts and that's only because I do go through those um as my everyday journal and then the rest of these are more like things that I'll grab for projects creative writing, things like that. Um, and then once in a while, I will use some of these notebooks as my main journal to just kind of get these used up. So starting here, I still have a Hieronymus Bosch notebook, which I love, I love, love, love. The Garden of Earthly Delights. So it is magnetic, it's lined, not a fan of lined paper, but um, I made an exception. This I got at the Seattle, the Emerald City Comic Con. Um, I actually bought two of these. I've already used one. It's a blank notebook. I love that one. I just love the look of it. This is a moleskin that I bought in a set. Um, I actually use these for work. Hold on, I'm going to shift because I'm sitting on the floor here. Um, I bought this as a set to use for work, so I currently have one at work, and I'm going to use the second one for work. So this is actually not something that I count to use for personal use. And so that's there. I was very kindly gifted this five-year journal for moms. I haven't started it yet, um, but I actually plan on maybe going back starting January and just refilling all the updates that I made for Gemma's growth when she was born in December, and then maybe use that to track her growth. But it's got such a pretty cover, and that was such a lovely little gift. So I have that. I have this feed binder. Oh gosh, doing this one-handed and then trying to put everything back was a bad idea. I got this when they did a collaboration with Target, and so I don't really count this as a journal. I really bought it for the binder itself because I actually bought two um, when they were on sale, and I use one of the binders to keep recipes in. And I bought the other to use as a planner a long, long time ago before ring bound planning was even a thing. Um, and um, so I just, I really like the binder and once in a while I'll just go back to this and use it for a project. So there's that. 
I have this cool Daiso notebook that's got different kinds of paper in it and I'm reluctant to use it because I'm kind of saving this for something special because I just like the way it's laid out. Two sets of field notes. These are the dime novels and then this is the plain paper but in the same binding and size as the dime novel. I really enjoyed using these notebooks. I'm not usually a fan of field notes paper just because it doesn't take ink very well but it takes pencil very well. And so I reserve field notes notebooks usually for creative writing projects. And so those I don't necessarily count as for journaling. Now this is a journal that I do need to use up. It's a Shakespeare notebook that I think I got at half price. And I enjoy the size very much. It's just got blank paper. Once in a while, it does have like a page with like a little quote on it. I like the cover. I love everything about this notebook and I do um, plan to use this up and I, I'm excited to use that one. And that's what having notebooks is all about. It's just getting excited about using them. This is just a Hobonichi cover that I'm not currently using. And this is like a faux Hobonichi cover that I had for a long time. I actually use this as like a travel case for journaling stuff. So that's in there. Um, my mod case um, that sits in here for now. These I pulled apart from a handmade sketchbook that I wasn't using anymore. And I used a lot of the papers for junk journals and stuff, but then I sewed in a few inserts to just use for projects, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. This is just a blank graph paper insert that I think I filled out. Oh, I filled out like, you know, three pages or something like that. And I was just going to recycle it and reuse it for something like a junk journal. This is a cover that I bought. Oh, I can't even remember the shop that I saw, but I love the Berenstain Bears. And in this, I can't remember. I think it was just a junk journal of just papers that I threw together. I started it before I moved to Washington. And I just glued in a bunch of papers and things, memories. Oh, that's what it is. It's just a junk journal of just like paper memories that I was still trying to get all that into a journal so it wasn't all loose in a box. I think this is kind of like the beginnings of where stationary minimalism really started was just getting all of those memories into journals. So we have that. This cool vintage box. holds all my tiny small notebooks that I still have yet to use. Linda used to own this in case you're wondering. Um, so I've got this pocket sized junk journal that I made a long 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 time ago before we moved to Washington and it's just filled with like little bits that pen pals used to send me. Various small notebooks. I don't think I ever did a flip through of this. This I made before my honeymoon because I intended it to be my honeymoon journal. It's a travel themed junk journal. I made two of them. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still getting over a cold, so I'm terrible cold. So various field notes and things like that, covers that I made from fabric, a notebook Hobonichi planner. <coughs> I have yet to use this set, but it's beautiful. I bought it a long time ago. I bought it at um, Powell's Bookstore. I'm saving this for something, and I don't know what, but when I realize what that's going to be, it's going to be a great day. This is a cute, cute little planner that I bought in China. 
oh my god, I must have been like 13 or something. I didn't have the heart to use it because back then we didn't have any of this stuff here. And I was so excited to buy this. And then when I brought it home, I realized that after I'd used it, I wouldn't be able to use it ever again because they didn't have this kind of stuff here. I, I didn't have the heart to use it. And so it's preserved in perfect condition. In its cute, adorable form. And once in a while, I take it out, I look at it, and I just admire the cuteness of it. And there we have it. And now it's like, this stuff is everywhere. But back in the day, this wasn't. And so I was just like, oh my god, I gotta keep it as is and never touch it. So that's the story of this Ruru Bear planner. I have an extra sketchbook. This is like a little pocket size that I found at Walmart. It was my niece who told me about this because she said her, um, my sister-in-law bought it for her um, right before we went on our family vacation. I'm like, oh my god, I've been trying to find a sketchbook this exact size. And um, so I went and bought two. Um, so I would have another one because these, these are hard to find in this size, in my opinion. I have still yet to use my beautiful birds themed junk journal. This too, I feel like I'm just waiting for a special occasion to use. And then it's one of those where once I use it, oh, it's going to be a great day. I'm so going to enjoy using this, and I'm also going to be sad to use it because that means I won't be able to use it again. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know. I just, I, I love this journal. I enjoyed making it. I love this journal. So that's another one I have to use up. Uh, this, I have such great memories with because a coworker. Um, who I'm friends with, his wife bought this for me. Um, I'm friends with both. Um, and I don't know. I just, they knew I loved London and all things English. And there's just something about this notebook and the thoughtfulness that she had in getting this for me. It just, um, it really touched my heart. And so this one I am also saving for a special occasion. So that every time I look at this, it just makes me happy. This is just a watercolor insert, just a couple of pieces of uh, watercolor paper I folded together into an insert. I got this at the Rick Steves bookstore or the shop in Edmonds. It's a travel journal, um, lined paper. I love Rick Steves, I love his stuff. <clears throat> These are three Daiso notebooks. You've seen me talk about these before. And I really, really enjoy this paper and this journal. I've already filled one of these journals. Um, so I've got three because I stocked up before I left. Um, you know what? I think this was my husband's, this drawing pad. And he wasn't using it anymore, so it just kind of ended up in my stash. This is a gray-toned sketchbook. I think I've had this one for a while, too. Um, I'm including sketchbooks and notebooks, too, just because they're just kind of all in the same category, even though I don't necessarily want to journal in it. But I just thought it'd be a fun color to work with. I ever wanted to sketch a lot more. I got this at Kino Kunia one year. Um, it was just, I just love the cover. And it's just got uh, such smooth paper. <clears throat> so pretty. I don't usually use that kind of size, but I bought it. <laughs> um, I've had this sketchbook for a while. Um, it was on clearance at Barnes & Noble, and I'm, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for sketchbooks, even though I don't necessarily have the time to fill them, but um, I love the cover, all oh, that chalk, which 
chalk or pastels, whichever it is. Oh, but I just, ooh. Motiva it motivates me just seeing that. And then this was another one, too, that I think was on clearance for, like, I don't know, $2 or something at Barnes & Noble. And I very much enjoy the feel of this paper. And I think that's it. I th that's pretty much it. That's got to be it. Because um, I don't... I don't think I keep any other outstanding notebooks. Any other notebooks that I have outstanding are ones that are kind of, they're pretty much in progress, if that makes sense. So I'm, I'm using them or I have used them. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Um, you know, I might have some over here in this shelf. I still have my Victorian Ladies Handbook Junk Journal. It's it's majorly falling apart, and so I, I tend not to want to handle this book too much because, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame, the binding has really fallen apart these last couple years since I've shown you the video. And so I've not handled it very much because of that. And so that is, I guess, considered an outstanding notebook. Um, that's my National Parks passport. I have this letters to my future self that I fill out every once in a while when I remember. And I actually have a few letters to myself that I think have been due to be open as of late, but I just, I haven't. Um, I'm kind of waiting to just maybe read them all at once. This is my nature journal. I have done very little in this since my move. And I want to get back into that. And this is my commonplace book, another one. This is a project that I definitely want to get back into. And then this is my watercolor sketchbook. That I bought in Edmonds. So I have fun memories with this, taking this to hikes. It's got a lot of happy memories in that, even though I think I've only done like two things in it. But um, that's pretty much it. Oh, and I think this one is my like projects, no, reading list. Is it? No, it's my projects book, which I've not touched in a long time. I used to have a notebook that I keep track of my books that I've read, but I don't remember where I've put it. That's what happens when you move. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that kind of gives you a slight update of what's going on with my notebooks, the outstanding ones that I still have yet to fill. I hope you guys are all doing well in your stationary minimalism journeys as well. I get a lot of messages from you guys about how encouraging it is to see other people do this and, um, you know, work toward using your own stuff. So I'm really glad that it's motivating you because it motivates me to hear that. So I hope to do more of these like little snippet videos. Um, but, um, just wanted to share. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.